Welcome, Lenny. <laughs> Thank you so much. Do I get some? Okay, you cannot say I have not prepared for my work, correct? All right. First, I got to tell you, I have died and gone to vegan speaker heaven, being opened by Michael Greger over here. And I am now opening for Don Forrester, who's after me, so I could not ask for better than that. And I want to thank you so much for coming to this session. You know, everyone wants to talk about the food and the eating, right? Because it's more fun to eat than it is to exercise. But I've got some secrets for you, some really great information to go, that you're going to go away with today that you can really apply. So if we can have it kind of quiet on the edges, I appreciate. Well, you know what? We'll have them come over and do the demonstrations, okay? <laughs> okay, so Fit Quickies. Five-minute fitness. Doesn't that just fan the flames of hope in your heart? It's like there's something so optimistic about that. Like five minutes, I can do that. Could I ask the people at the sides of the room to please keep voices down? Thank you. Yes, we're doing some serious fitness here. Thank you. So look, we all want the benefits of being more fit, don't we? Okay, and I can guarantee that there isn't one person in this room that wouldn't agree with me that when you move your body, whether it's for a short workout or a full-blown hard workout or a walk, that when you're done, you just feel better, don't you? Okay, I'm seeing the heads nodding. Woo. You feel more energetic, you feel livelier, you just feel healthier. And we know that health is more than the numbers on the chart. Health is also having the vitality and the resiliency to do everything that you want to do in your life. And please don't forget it, that is what you want. You have to connect with your why. Why do you want to be more vibrant and more healthy? But five minutes? Can you really do something in five minutes? Well, I'll tell you what, the face of fitness is changing. Yes, we know, whoops, hey. There we go, that wasn't so bad. We still know that we need cardiorespiratory training for our heart and our lungs. We still know that we need resistance training so that we have strong body muscles and bones. And we know that we need flexibility training. We know that we need to stretch. The problem is that I find that there is still so much confusion about how much of each of these elements we need to be healthy. Have you ever felt like that? Like, I don't know, I, I give up, I'm just not gonna do any of it. <laughs> and then there's the problem, how the heck to fit it all in. So one of my goals with the Fit Quickies book was to cut through all the clutter of, of information out there about what we need of all of these different elements to be a healthy adult. And I put together an exercise prescription for you that's very simply laid out in the book. And, and, I wanted to deliver the very exciting news about five minute fitness. So here's the, um, the plan for today. I wanna to tell you a little bit about how the Fit Quickies five minute workout idea came into being and why they are so powerful because there are specific reasons. I want to talk with you a little bit about sedentarism. Have you heard that word? Oh my gosh, it's not just being sedentary, it's like being sedentary a lot. It's got a name, sedentarism. I'd like to talk to you about what you can add to your diet that makes a big difference, which you are probably doing a lot of as veg heads yourself. Um, I also want to talk to you a little bit about mindset and motivation. They really matter. If you want to make a transformation, okay folks, this is 61 on whole foods plant-based diet and fit quickies and a little bit of running. And this was me uh, 15 years ago as a vegetarian. Tomorrow I'm giving another talk on the food part because I can't do too much in this one short time. But this is me, you know, 50 pounds lighter today. So a little bit of information from you from the visual. Um, and along the way, oh, mindset and motivation really matter, and I'm going to teach you a willpower workout. Does that sound good? Okay. Uh, if we can fit her in, because we kind of got a little late start. And I'm going to sneak in some fit quickies with you along the way. We're going to do seven seconds still flat belly. Does that appeal? 
Uh, we're going to do um, I, I, legs into play, which is an instant invigorator and rebuilds your brain in seconds. And if there's time, we'll do legs into, you know, I mean, higher assets. That's with a T, higher assets. I want to be polite here, OK? <laughs> so that is the plan. And then any time for Q&A we have, OK? OK, let me ask you a question. Is anybody here consider themselves a busy person? Oh, so maybe this little five-minute idea may, might appeal to you, huh? Well, I am too. I am, am busy because, uh, for a couple of reasons. One is because I travel a lot to present about food and fitness to find people such as yourselves. And another is because my husband and I travel all over the world uh, for a couple different reasons. One is we volunteer as field biologists. And also, we like to do travel adventure to different places, you know, hiking and biking and scuba diving. And these are all very active kinds of things. But I don't know, has this ever happened to you that you go on a trip, whether for vacation or whether for business travel, and there's some kind of disconnect between your usual exercise routine and what happens on there? Has that ever happened to you? You know, I'm the same way. People think that because I'm into fitness that I've got it all together and I just get up in the morning and everything, all my ducks, you know, line up in a row. But that's not true. I have to plan just as much as everybody else. And so this is how this, the story of how Fit Quickies came about. It so happened that about four years ago, we were on scuba holiday. And at this particular location, as we were going on the trip, I thought, okay, what's going to happen this time? Sure, I get a little cardio in when I'm paddling out to the reef, and we do some walking. But I know that the, my muscle conditioning kind of takes a back seat. And I'll tell you what, I thought I want to come up with something that will not only help me keep in shape, but keep my shape. Do you hear a little difference there? OK, keep in shape and keep my shape. And both of those are important to me. So here we are. We're at this desert island. And I'm thinking, what's going to happen this time? Well, guess what, my friends? The real field temperature of this place was like 107 degrees. And I wasn't going to slam out any you know, 45-minute muscle conditioning workout. All you, we could really do was sit in the water. And I started thinking, you know, I've been in this business a long time of fitness and training and coaching. It's been at least 40 years. I've got all these credentials. You heard the little list there. I have all these trainings. Maybe there's got to be some way I can think outside the workout box and come up with some kind of a plan. So you know what I did? I went through my mental arsenal of body shaping, strengthening exercises that I had kept over all those years. You know that handful of moves that you know are really effective? You know what I'm talking about? You know when a muscle challenge is effective because you feel it. You get into the muscle fast and hard, and you can get out. And these are the exercises I kept returning to time and time again in my own practice or in my training or teaching with other people. So I thought, what if I do this? What if instead of feeling like I have to do one long workout, that I take these at little segments over the course of the day, something in the morning, something in the mid-morning, something at noon, spend three to five minutes, do just one of those exercises. So I tried it. That's exactly what I did. So what I do is I get up in the morning, and while I'm cooking our oatmeal and our hot drink, I would do um, you know, one of my exercises there, spend three to five minutes. And then at like 9 o'clock, when we're loading up the truck with our scuba gear to go out to the beach, I'd do, you know, this is where I got higher assets. <laughs> um, and it worked. After those two weeks, I was so excited. And I came, as we were leaving, I thought, I'm not going to be the only person that can benefit from this. I know that there are other going to people. That, uh, there are going to be other people that like this idea of being able to pepper it in without feeling like you have to take a whole bunch of time. So I came home and I started to make videos as well as teaching them in my classes. Um, and this is where they started. These videos are still up on my website. And this is what caught the eye of the publisher. They came to me. They saw these uh, workouts and they thought this would make a cool little book. Would you like to do one? And well, I wasn't going to say no. <laughs> But I said, yes, but it also has to include whole foods, plant-based diet, and mastery and motivation, something for the mind. 
because without all three of those in place, it's not honest. It takes all three. That's how I explain this transformation of the picture that I showed you, and that's the foundation of my work. You'll see it coming up over and over again. With our limited time, we're focusing on the fitness, but all three of those are very, very important. And then, as I started to teach these and people were starting to practice them, um, I really, I'm a kind of a real nerd about research. What's gonna support the evidence I'm finding? I wasn't happy with just the evidence that it was working. I wanted to see what's in the literature that supports these results that I'm getting. Why is it that these particular exercises work? And I was so excited, you guys, I found it. So I'm gonna share a couple of these little things with you to show you, and this is all in the book, in the Fit Quickies book, the exercises I have, the research in there about what supports them. Um, here's an example. Okay, no, this looks real sciencey, but I know that you guys like the facts too. One of the exercises that I really like to do is the, um, for the gluteal, gluteus maximus is, I showed you, higher assets, and there's another, accent, another exercise like that. So I looked to the literature and I said, what it is about that exercise that feels like it's getting in and getting out of that muscle fast? And I found this incredible study by the American Council on Exercise. Now they don't have anything to sell, no equipment, they just want people moving their bodies, kind of like I do. And they took a series of exercises through electromyography testing. Electromyography is where you attach electrodes to the surface of the skin and it measures the activation of the muscle right beneath it. You might have seen it or had it done yourself, okay? You might recognize some of these exercises are squats, single leg, uh, leg presses, you might have seen that in a gym, um, step ups, lunges, all of these exercises. But the one with the highest blue line, meaning it had the most mu muscle activation of the gluteus maximus back here, was the quadruped hip extension. Guess what? I'll show it to you. Okay, this, this is two books, uh, two of the Fit Quickies. Up at the top is, I'm demonstrating Fit Quickie number four, which is gorgeous glutes and hamstrings. Do you see why it's called quadruped? I have four on the floor. I have my two hands and my two knees until one gets lifted. When the leg is lifted to the back, the hip is extending. So this is the quadruped hip extension. Well, this supports why this exercise was so effective. And notice, um, and this is higher assets, which was recent, I hope I say that right every time. I'm always afraid I'm gonna leave the T out. But this was featured recently on Forks Over Knives. Do you notice the similarity here? I turned it vertical. Because here's another thing I wanted with these exercises. I wanted portability. I do, I do this in the line waiting for the airplane. I do this in the market. Nobody knows. You know. <laughs> um, and you can sneak it in like that. Plus, I wanted exercises that were going to be able to use your own body weight resistance as much as possible. Again, portability. I'm not taking 20 pound dumbbells in my luggage, my friends. You know, that's, that's got to be something that works for me. Now, here's another exercise. Fit quickie number three is triceps triple play. Everyone knows the triceps, right? The back of the arm, universal target area of concern, am I right? That's because it doesn't, doesn't get any challenge. Unless you're doing push-ups all day, or kneading bread all day, or doing some kind of pushing exercise, those muscles are just taking a nap. So the American Council on Exercise, again, focused on a whole series of moves to see which fired up the most muscle fibers most quickly via electromyography. The top one was triangle push-up. That's where you have your hands and elbows in a triangle. You might have seen those, very challenging. And the second one is kickbacks. Is this familiar to you? Yeah. Probably done that in a gym. Well, look at this. This is fit quickie number three. As I said, triceps triple play, so named because the triceps muscle has three heads and to best develop those muscles, which are the most responsible for the shape and strength of your arms, by the way, you need to target all three heads. Each of these exercises, I show you explicitly how to set it up so that you can get maximize your benefit in a minimum amount of time. Now, another thing I wanted to investigate was the argument of repetitions versus weights. Have you ever heard this talk? If you've ever been anywhere near a gym, you know there's the um, heavyweight lifters who say you have to lift heavy weights and do few repetitions to really build muscle. And then there's the camp that says, you know, if you're, building, if you're doing lighter weights, you're just toning a muscle, and no one ever seems to know what tone means, right? Well, guess what? 
Very exciting again. The research tells us that they both work. They both will develop muscle as long as you are paying attention to certain parameters. Now again, the ACE, the American Council on Exercise, did several studies on this. And if you are using a lighter weight to get into that muscle, as long as you are maximizing the muscle workload within 90 seconds, then you are doing just as well as with heavier weight and less repetitions. If you go past 90 seconds, like if you're doing a, you know, this is the biceps curl. I could lift this for three days and probably not getting, <laughs> I would not be getting enough of a muscle challenge. So that 90 seconds is kind of a critical time to make sure you're getting in and hitting that muscle hard. All of the fit quickies are set up with this in mind. I have you position yourself specifically to maximize the intensity of the exercise in a short period of time without heavy weights, which by the way, they present such an orthopedic challenge. An orthopedic, I mean joints, you know, your elbows, your knees. I don't know if you've ever tried slugging around heavy weights or, you know, ouch. So there's lots of good reasons that this is good news. So overall, again, resistance training with lighter weights and higher reps or heavier weights and lower reps can produce similar muscular responses as long as it is within the 90 seconds. That's the limits of the anaerobic energy system. Otherwise, you're just doing aerobic exercise. I have this uh, study is detailed in the book as well. So long short, I want to finish on this one topic so we can move on. Um, as long as you're applying maximal effort toward the end of the set, the evidence suggests there's the different external forces. That means how much resistance you have produce the same results. And if you're interested in this, I suggest you read this study by Ralph Carpinelli out of Adelphi. Listen to the title of this, The Size Principle and a Critical Analysis of the Unsubstantiated Heavier is Better Recommendation for Resistance Training. He couldn't find the evidence. It was almost like one person said it, so everyone else said it. You know, like oral tradition, we just kind of pass it on to our children. It's not. It's supported by the literature. Now, if you're an Olympic power lifter and you're competing by weighing, lifting 500 pounds and a clean jerk overhead, you better probably train with that. All right, I'm talking about healthy fitness and good body shaping. So long short, effort trumps heavy, think effort not heavy. Think effort not heavy. And this, this is all from the book too. So another thing I did with these exercises is I told you I also set them up to maximize their effectiveness in a short period of time. I'm also a real geek about form and alignment. I have an extensive back, a dance background, and all the exercises I took to a physical therapist and an exercise physiologist, because I want you to be well shaped, but I want you to be safe and have you know, good work on your joints. And I want you to also be able to get a lot done in a short period of time. So each of the exercises I set up with what I call PAIR. P stands for position, that's your alignment, how you line your body up. The A stands for your anchor points. For example, in this image, my anchor points are my fingertips on the bar. That could be a chair or a kitchen countertop. You don't need to go out and buy a bar for any of these things, by the way. Um, and isolation is when you isolate that muscle so you can work it. An example of isolation, everyone just stand up real quick. I know you need it. I'm starting to see a little, let's stand up, okay? Now what I'd like you to do is bend your knees so that until you sit in your chair, but don't sit down and stop there. Can you feel the muscle isolation? Raise your hand when you feel muscle working in your thigh. We're going to sit here till everybody hands their hands up. OK, great. Have a seat. Go all the way down. That's how you isolate and overload a muscle. You get your body in the position to make it work, and then you do any repetitions that you need to do. All right, so another couple things. This doesn't just stand for cardio. I mean, for um, muscle training, this five-minute inter intermittent fitness. Again, and in the book, I have several citations of research that says you can do five minutes of muscle work here, five minutes there, and five minutes there. And by the end of the day, by the end of the week, if you've done all the exercises scattered throughout, you get the same benefits. It's the same thing for cardio. Cardio needs to be usually about 10 minutes, though, to get the whole system involved. But it's true. If you're supposed to be doing, let's say, you know, 30 minutes, five or six days a week, that doesn't have to be all at once. As a matter of fact, in this research report, research here, uh, a dozen, uh, 47 women that were aged about um, 45, 
they split them into three groups, just to give you a really explicit example. And one, they were all assigned, no, two of the groups were assigned 30 minutes of cardio to do every day. One group did it in one long bout of fitness. That means 30 minutes all at once. The other group did 10 minutes here, 10 minutes there, 10 minutes there. And the other group was the control group, and they had, they didn't do any, you know, any cardio. Well, guess what? All, both groups had similar benefits in terms of health, but guess what? The short bout people had improvement, more improvements in decreased waist circumference and smaller measures of skin caliper testing, you know, which tests your body fat. So there's some little evidence there about, uh, you know, the intermittent fitness. Now, I have my suspicions about that, why that was. They exercise longer than 10 minutes. That could be, she says, they exercise longer than 10 minutes, but on my list was, let's say they stuck to the 10 minutes. These people were told not to change their diet in any way. Well, we have evidence to suggest that when you are an active person, you, especially intermittently, you restore physical confidence and brain power that translates to better choices in food. Don't you usually make a better choice when you're being more active? And plus, they were getting a metabolic boost several times during the day. So I don't have the proof on that, but those are my suspicions about this. Okay, so this means time for a fitness break. This person should need no uh, introduction. This is Juliana Heber, the plant-based dietitian, and she is a big Fit Quickies fan. So what I'd like you to do is go ahead and get you up on your feet and get you moving again. I may have to jump up on the stage. Would that be too weird? Up, up. Oh, you mean like do a backflip up? Okay. Okay, good, because I want you to see what's going on. Um, I did promise to show you those pair things, you know, position, anchors, and isolate, and um, repetitions. So I told you I'm also a real nerd about lining the body up for safety and effectiveness. So I'm going to give you those positions right now. I want you to just stand. Um, let's start with toes turned out just for... Uh, we're going to be doing fit quickie number 10, which is which is legs into play. Oh, well, that, see, getting them up on their feet didn't wake them up, but that sure did. <laughs> okay, that wasn't in the plan, by the way. Now, what I'd like you to do is pull your abdominal wall in just a little bit, and then what I'd like you to do is grip your gluteals just a little bit, all right, very lightly. Did you feel how your pelvis moved a little bit? All right, what you did is you put your spine into what I call anchored neutral position, you took, you took the release out of the abdominals and you got your pelvis aligned to support your body for any other kind of activity. Now, what I'd like you to do is float your rib cage directly up from your waist. Like, try to elevate it. Good, your shoulders stay relaxed. Beautiful. Don't you feel better already? Honestly. Then from here, shoulders back. And now extend the top of your head to the ceiling. All right? Walking like a god or goddess. That's the feeling that you want. Very good. This is correct anatomical alignment for any kind of exercise that you're going to do, even just walking. Now, to do legs into play, as I asked you, I want your toes to turned out, your heels together. It's kind of like you're at a, uh, what is that, 90 degree angle there? I'm afraid to kick the wrong thing here. <laughs> all right, now let, lock your legs all the way straight, re grip your glutes. Now, what happened to your belly? Get it back, okay? Get your shoulders back. Now just start to tap your heels a little bit. Just you know, like moving an inch off the floor, all right? Now your legs are straight because what you're, you're doing so many things right now, and I'll tell you more about it when we're done, but I want you to know that your benefit of having your legs straight, there's a muscle, a calf muscle that goes right through your knee. This strengthens the muscles around the knee to stabilize the knee joint. If you have knee issues but you can't train them because it hurts to bend them, this is your answer. Okay, who's starting to feel a little bit of burn in their calves? Are you starting to get a little bit of heart, um, heart rate up? Okay, now let's change it. Let's come up to the toes, down to the heels. Get your butt back, get your belly back. Get the shoulders back, get the rib cage up. Four, let's do four more. And lift, and down. Anybody not feel their calves yet? And two, and one, excellent. Now keep your beautiful posture, put your feet in parallel, and step your left foot back because we want to stretch the calves. I always stretch after the fit quickie so that you release the muscle and help to stabilize the joint. Pull the heel off the floor and back, push it back down, take a nice deep breath. Then switch to the other side, put the foot down on the floor and back. 
Pull the heel off the floor. Push the heel down and back. Lift, keep your beautiful posture and float back on down to your chair. Excellent job. Now let me tell you about some of the, thing, the awesome things that you just did for your body. Um, these are some of the muscles that you worked here. But very importantly, there's a reason I started with this as the move for you to do. The minute you sit down, as we just did, what happens to the muscles of your calves? They relax. They kind of check out of the program, don't they? Well, guess what? Your calves are your peripheral pump. That means that we rely to a great extent on their contraction and release, see she knows, to pump the, uh, the blood out of the extremities, extremities back to the heart, up to your brain so that you can recharge your system and reoxygenate re your system. Is it any wonder that we've been sitting for 20, 30, 40, 60 minutes that we start getting sleepy, we start getting brain fog, it's because we aren't getting that pumping action. It's also the pump for our lymphatic system. And you know what the lymphatic system right, is, right? It's our detox agent. So you're sitting in no oxygen and having toxicity built up in your body by not moving those calves. This move that I just taught you, if nothing else, to combat sedentarism, which we're just gonna spend a few minutes on right now, if you sit a lot at work, set your clock for 45 minutes, and every 45 minutes get up and do that move. And that's your first place to fight the problems of sedentarism. And you know, that's not hard to do. And don't you feel more charged up in your brain? You know, you just, you're just there, you're more present. So this thing with sedentarism is a huge problem. It's also called inactive physiology. Who's heard about this before? Have you heard a little bit about this? Oh, oh, very important information. Here's, in a, in a nutshell, here's the deal. If you are sitting for two, three, four hours at a time, you know how that goes at the computer. Oh, you know, <laughs> you've been there for a few hours. Your disease biomarkers accelerate quite rapidly. Here's the list. Um, increased risk of metab metabolic risk factors for type 2 diabetes, your triglyceride levels go up, your um, cholesterol levels go up, you have decreased insulin sensitivity, that means your insulin doesn't work as well to get the glucose out of your bloodstream and into your uh, muscles for energy. Okay, now you may be, some, how many of you do exercise, get in your, you know, workouts? It's okay, I don't want to point, everyone can raise their hand, I won't tell. <laughs> But here's the thing, you're probably, you might be thinking, well, I do my exercise, so I'm okay. Guess what, here's the bad news. Even if you are doing like 45 minutes, an hour of exercise every day or every other day, if you also have big chunks of sitting time during the day, these disease biomarkers accelerate for you just as rapidly as for someone who does not get their exercise in. I know it's not fair, right? <laughs> There's even a name for you. If you get in your exercise, but you have these big chunks of sitting time, you're actually called an active couch potato. So what's the solution? Do you see the fit for the five minute fitness solution? All right, if you're not able to get these big chunks of time in, not to worry, you can accomplish this mission of reversing disease by simply getting up off your <laughs> more often during the course of the day and moving. Another really good solution is standing workstation. And this is just my, you know, cheap and easy setup at home. I know you can spend thousands of dollars on fancy systems that have you stand and work, but I tell you what, you guys, the more I found out about this, the problems of sitting too much, I did just what I told you to do. I started setting my timer for 45 minutes. And then it kind of became a habit. After that period of time, I started getting kind of edgy, and then I started notice, noticing it was really more fun being stuck standing than stuck sitting. So I went out to the, uh, the graveyard, the furniture graveyard in the garage. Do you have one of those? And I found this little credenza down here and I put it under my desk and this is in my office at home in Northern California, just a little bit north of here. And so I stand, I put it together correctly so my elbows are bent right and my gaze is right. There's a whole simple science to it. But boy, what a difference. And this is a really good move that you can make for your health. Not sitting so much. Set your timer, move your body, and then take it from there. And all kinds of people are sending me their pictures. If you put one together, send it 
and I'll put it on my blog, <laughs> okay? Feature it up. So, long short. Can you read it? <laughs> okay, wasn't sure. You know, they always tell us we're supposed to see our doctor before we do an exercise program. And I said, did anyone uh, tell you to see their doctor before you sat on the couch for 10 years? <laughs> now, I know you're supposed to go see your doctor on this stuff, but I think my point is made, OK? Um, this, oh, here's another. Uh, this is like a plant athlete. You recognize her? Ellen Jaffe Jones, she spoke here last year. And I wanted to do another fit bre fitness break. And everyone says, please teach this. Are you ready for seven seconds to a flat belly? Yes? Oh, <laughs> this is a good one. This was fit quickie number one. It started the whole ball rolling. So let's get up on our feet again. And let me see that um, perfect alignment and posture where your belly is just in a little bit. Grip your glutes slightly. Rib cage is up. Shoulders back. And I don't care what position your feet in. Just have fun with it. Beautiful. Top of head to ceiling. Now, here is the science behind this one. Your abdominal area. Oh, first let me ask. This addresses belly pooch. Is there any, if, if you do not know what belly pooch is, would you please present yourself? Okay. You really, you don't know? I didn't plant her. It's that thing that tends to pooch out here. Okay. That's the first person I've ever had, and thousands of people raise their hand and say she didn't know. So thank you for letting me teach to the moment. It is this area pooching out. But the good news is, my friends, you may have thought, gosh, I'm getting fat down there. I've got to do something about it. But it's not just the abdominal fat. There's two reasons for belly pooch, primary. One is, yes, as we move through time, which is how I call getting older, we tend to increase our deposition of body fat in this area, depending on our genetics. But the other reason, something that you can do something about right away, is because of the softening of the muscles deep in the abdominal wall that are your natural girdle. But guess what? You don't have to do a bunch of sit-ups to activate it. You can activate this muscle, the transverse abdomen is there. It's the deepest one. Isometrically. You know what an isometric exercise is? It's like when you squeeze a fist. Squeeze your fist hard. Just pick a hand. That's isometric. You didn't go anywhere, didn't you know, move any direction. It just tightened upon itself. You can do that with that abdominal muscle. Now, there's all these other abdominal muscles, and they all kind of come into play whenever you're activating your abdominal area. But that's the one that's right next to your internal organs, and that's your girdle. OK, what happens to the girdle that's all stretched out and doesn't have any tone? Just use your imagination. <laughs> OK, well, if it's, if it's containing your abdominal organs, if the girdle is soft and released, and there's nothing to contain those abdominal organs anymore, where are they going to go? Yeah, they're going to kind of go down and out. So if your transversus abdominis is weak, you get more pressure on the pelvic flown. floor, can lead to incontinence, other kinds of problems, and your profile kind of gets messed up a little bit. Here's the good news. All you have to do is contract it. Here's how the seven seconds work. Let's get our posture back in case you lost it. I'm going to ask you to take a nice deep breath in. And then for seven seconds, you're going to exhale. And as you exhale, you're going to think of pulling this muscle in, like you're trying to push your belly to the wall behind you. I can see everyone's already experimenting with it. Good, excellent class. Then after the breath is all the way out, you're going to hold that and squeeze it as hard as you can. Harder, harder, harder for seven seconds. And then release it. Got it? OK, let's go through that two times. The reason I have you exhale with it is because that transverse abdominis muscle is hitched up with your diaphragm to exhale your breath. So if you're contracting that muscle and pushing the breath out, you're working more with your body to make this mission happen. All right, ready? Let's go. Take a breath in. And then breath out. Pull the belly in. Three, four, five. Keep scooping it out. Six, seven. Now hold it as tight as you can and squeeze it hard. Two, three. You can breathe if you have to. Don't feel like you have to hold your breath. Six. Seven, let it go. Take a breath in. Who felt a little burn in the belly when they did that that time? And five, six, one more round. That's all we got time for. Make it count. Exhale. Two, three, pull the belly in. Feel like you're scooping it out. Keep the shoulders back. Seven, now squeeze it as hard as you can. Tight and tighter. Keep your face relaxed. Four, <laughs> five, six, seven, and let it go. Go ahead and float on back down to your seat. By the way, if you're wondering, 
Uh, if you did not feel that burn in the belly, guess what? It does not mean that you did anything wrong. It just gives you information about a connection you need to build between your brain and your body. And when you're doing this at home, which by the way, you can do laying down in bed before you get in the morning, laying down in bed after you get there at night, sitting in your car, sitting at your computer, standing at the market, supermarket line, you can squeeze this one anywhere. It doesn't take any equipment. And the better you get at it, the, the faster it works. You will get so you can just go like that and feel that muscle burning. And honestly, I've seen people lose an inch off of their belly in two weeks' time doing this exercise, not because they burned off a bunch of fat. We all know that you can't target fat reduced in the, in the area, but because of the restoration of girdle power, right? So now you've got two things to take away with you, right? You've got the legs into play, you got the seven seconds to flat belly, and all these exercises are detailed in the Fit Quickies book. Um, by the way, remember I said I wanted to mention the food earlier? And I mentioned the th what I call the three pillars, the food, the fitness, and the frame of mind. You need all three. Tomorrow I'm presenting at um, 1 o'clock in the garden room. It's a smaller room, and I'll be talking more about the foods and how my progression in a whole foods plant-based diet helped me achieve this, where did my picture go? My weight loss that I showed you in my picture there. All right? I also have a um, plant-based blueprint on my website for you to download, so you can go to landymulerath.com and download that. Okay, another fitness break. We're not gonna have time for higher assets, but I promised the willpower workout, okay? Who wants a willpower workout? Okay. Okay, this one's in the book so you can get it. Um, I also have the whole chapter in the book is called Wind Up Your Willpower because it addresses this thing about willpower workout. Let me explain something to you. Who, okay, let me ask, who does not know what willpower or won't power is? We all have an idea what that is, right? Every morning you are, I'm going to come down to be closer. Every morning you are refreshed after a good night's sleep, trusting that you've had a good night's sleep, that is with a fresh store of willpower. Now, you know what I mean. Isn't that the time of day when you go, I'll do my exercise today, I'll eat right today, I'll get that project done today, I'll clean out that closet today. Somehow in the morning, that always seems to make a lot more sense to us. And then as the day goes on, and you know, it's like two o'clock in the afternoon, and it's like, what the heck, I'm just gonna lay on the couch, and what's a workout, and you know, I'll just eat whatever. There's a reason for this. This this willpower, which is actually a simple way of saying that command center of your brain, that part of your brain that can make the better choice, that can reach for the apple instead of the cookie. We all know what that feeling is, right? I can make that better choice. This is very susceptible to stress that accumulates through the course of the day. So let's say you get up, you've got all these great resolutions and plans for the day, and then you know you drop your favorite teacup, the toast burns, the dog won't come in, you have to go to work, there's traffic, you have a disagreement with whoever. It, these all hammer away at that prefrontal cortex. So is it any wonder by the time you hit that 10 a.m. break or that 2 p.m. whatever and the, you know, the bo box of donuts starts looking kind of interesting? <laughs> because those things will give you a surge of energy and your willpower is shot. It doesn't, no matter what you say, it's going to be gone. Here's the good news. You can restore it. It responds very well, specifically to two things. Three to five minutes of physical activity. I kid you not. This is like a match made in heaven. That restores the prefrontal cortex. Now, what does this tell you about what you can do to help manage stress? both preventatively and in moments of crisis, better to be preventive, and also slowing down the breath. If you can slow your breathing down to four to six times per minute, you restore the prefrontal cortex. Well, guess what? You have just done the willpower workout. Seven seconds to a flat belly. That, re that slows down your breathing rate to about four breaths per minute, right? Seven seconds out, seven seconds in, that's 15 seconds. Then. So this move is so powerful, not only for your abdominal area and your body profile, but because it will restore your brain. Also, this move, legs into play, three to five minutes of exercise like that, that helps to restore. So my suggestion to you to do intermittent exercise throughout the day, 
Even if you are getting your other workouts in, this will help you physically and mentally be a more person filled with more vitality and have more success to be able to do all the things that you want to do in life. So well, there we go. Although willpower reserve drains in the face of stress, it's a renewable resource and it can be replenished with just five minutes of exercise or meditation. Meditation is another form. Breathing exercises work as well. So before, in closing, what I'd want to do, and I'll be happy to take some questions also, um, keep it in mind, you need the movement, the eating, and the mindset. I call it the food, the fitness, and the frame of mind. All three are important. Do you see how we connected them in this time together? We had some tools there. I didn't just give you physical fitness tools, which is very, very important, but I connected how that can also help restore your brain power and help you with some mindset mastery. And we will talk more about that in my, um, show me the plants, that's the name of my session tomorrow. So, any questions that I can answer? By, by the way, um, I do have, my books are over here, and you know Ann Wheat from Millennium Restaurant? She is my lovely assistant, Ann, you wanna wave? She's got a bunch of my books over there, so I'm so appreciative of her. She's been a wonderful hostess to me. And also, next week in Oakland, there's going to be a plant-powered fitness expo. If you haven't heard about that, i got a flyer up here. So anybody have a question or some target area of your concern you want to fit quickie for? Or... Okay. All right. Well, I'm going to scoot on over. Oh, here's one here. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. He said, is there something magical about the 45 minutes? We don't have the research that tells us exactly when the cutoff point is. Like, you know, 29 minutes, oh, better go 30 minutes. Um, the, I am doing that because many of us are used to so many hours that 45 minutes is going to kind of come up kind of soon. And we know if you sit for into two hours, it starts to be danger zone. So what I suggest is if you can get up every 30 minutes, yes. If you can get up every 15 minutes, yes. If you can do a standing workstation and instead stand for two hours and then sit for an hour, that answer that? Great question. And I can't wait for the research to come out about that. So someone else I can help out real quick. Thank you for being so much. Oh, wait a minute. No, see, I can't do that. Go ahead. <laughs> Oh, knee problems. Yeah. Well, you even saw, these are set up so that, as I told you, I took them to a physical therapist and an um, exercise physiologist to protect the joints. So that is a good one to start with, but I suggest you look through the book and see which other ones look like could be good, like even higher assets. That does not bend and flex the knee joint. It's stable while you work the muscles in the back of the leg. The one that was on the floor, the quadruped hip extension, all of those. So there are several that will allow for that. Yes. Exercise for the lower lumbar. Okay, well, I'll tell you what, the primary one was getting your body into anchored neutral position. Because one of the big problems with belly pooch, you guys, is guess what? When I lose good alignment, if I let my this go out, which is how most of us stand, I'm exact. You know, walk through the market. Everyone's walking like this. You know, the bellies are out and then the butts are out. This is because we've lost the condition of the gluteals and the abdominals. So if you will simply practice the posture that I showed you and walk with that in mind, you will then take the pressures off your back. The lumbar problem, and I address that in the book, it's really important that you do anchored neutral position so that your back is supported for movement. Great question. Yes? Yeah, I understand that. Thank you. you well, well, I have just a very limited amount of time to follow up on this research. Yeah, I'm not surprised. Is there someone else who has a quickie question for me? Yes. Sure. Um, she asked for a review of the correct posture, and you're welcome to stand up with me if you'd like to do it, because it's always better to put it right into your body. You just wanted me to do one of those backflips up here again. Right? I think I'm doing this pretty gracefully, don't you? 
Okay, okay. All right, go ahead and put your feet in parallel position. I have the, there's a whole section on the book on anchored neutral. Now from here, I want you to pull the abdominal wall in just a little bit, and then grip your gluteals slightly. Now you should feel anchored in your lower body, yes? Okay, now let your rib cage pull up from your hips. What you do is automatically now, you are decompressing the spine. You get better nerve transmission through your back. Shoulders, put your fingertips here, and pull the shoulders back. Now you might feel like you're sticking your chest out, but honestly, don't, you, don't I look like I just have good posture? Yes, you will become accustomed to that. We're so used to this, that this feels like, you look beautiful. What's your name? Shanja. Shanja? Chandra. I have a funny name too, so I understand. Okay, and then extend the top of your head to the ceiling. All right, now that's how you can walk through the rest of the day. You can set yourself like up, and here's a tip for you. To help you learn this, back up to a wall at any point during the day, push your shoulders back against the wall, pull your belly in and squeeze your glutes and then step away from the wall and you'll walk like a goddess the rest of the day, or a god. <laughs> All right, did that help? Yes, Great, so my pleasure, you have been so much fun. Thank you very much. And I'm gonna be signing books and back, so I hope you'll come see me back there.